This is Barry Bryson. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. Uh, we're going to finish up our study of the book of Malachi and our study of the Minor Prophets by looking at the last three verses of Malachi, the last three verses of the entire Old Testament. The conclusion is, remember the law of Moses, my servant, even the statutes and ordinances which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I am going to send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. And he will restore the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the land with a curse. Okay, so um, remember your covenant. Mount Horeb is Mount Sinai. And this book is about the fact they are being apathetic and indifferent in keeping their covenants. They're, they're, they're just not giving God their best. And they're not keeping their covenants with their offerings, with their tithes. They're not keeping their marriage covenants. They're just not. They're not keeping, the Levites are not keeping their special covenant with God as his, uh, as his custodians of the covenant and of the word. Keep your covenants. You have a covenant with me. It's the Mosaic Law. I gave it on Mount Sinai, so keep it. That's what God says. That's his conclusion. And we could, we could, we could receive this this uh, warning ourselves and apply it to our covenant with God, uh, the gospel, the covenant of the gospel, the covenant of grace that we have with Him. And then He makes this promise. And let's not forget what we've been saying all along. What we said yesterday, as we concluded. God folds the coming of the Messiah and the end of time into one event in, in, in this prophecy, uh, in this book. They are a singular event. They are the great day of the Lord, the culmination of his will. Uh, and, and the New Testament sees it sort of in that way too, because our salvation is described as something already achieved. Uh, Jesus has already destroyed the forces of darkness, and yet we live in a world that is sinful, a world dominated by the prince of the power of the air. Uh, and we look forward to the end of time when the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised. We're living in in the um, in the um, um, actual happening itself. Um, and we, we like to think of ourselves as happening before, or living in, in a time before the end happens, but we're actually living in the process of the end happening because the culmination of God's plan is one event, which involves the sending of the Messiah, the offering of salvation, and the judgment of the world. And that's being described here. Um, and here we have the promise of Elijah to prepare the way, which is the, the, the sending of John the Baptist. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all make that clear, that, that this is clearly understood by by people to, to, to mean someone will come before the Messiah to announce his coming. And Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John clearly uh, associate that with John the Baptist. And of course, the question is asked of John the Baptist in John's Gospel. As we will begin our study of the Gospel of Mark next time, and we'll begin our study with the ministry of John the Baptist, uh, I think this is a pretty cool place to, uh, to, to end our study of the Minor Prophets. Before we do, though, I want to, um, I want to uh, um, compare the ending of the Old Testament with the ending of the New, because the last word of the Old Testament is curse. Both Old and New Testaments end by looking forward to the culmination of God's plan. And in Malachi, the culmination of that plan is the coming of the Messiah and final judgment. In the book of Revelation, it is the coming of Christ in judgment and the final judgment. Um, and so um, they are so similar in that way. But the last word, the last thought of the Old Testament is curse. Be afraid of me coming and cursing and smiting you, okay? Be afraid and, 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 and judge accordingly. Uh, that's how the Old Testament ends. And this is how the New Testament ends. He who testifies these things says, yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. It is not a looking forward to judgment, but a looking forward to grace. 
and is saying to God's Messiah, promised throughout the Old Testament prophets, promised in the last verses of the book of Malachi, the last verses of the Old Testament, that promise is a promise of grace and of salvation. And so we don't look forward in fear like Habakkuk does when he says, I'm shaking in my boots, but I'm going to stand here and wait for God to do what he said he was going to do. Or looking forward to smiting, uh, <laughs> which is which is what is, is mentioned at the very end of the book of Malachi. But looking forward to grace, grace which has already been given to us. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. Well, we're going to pick up next time with our study of the Gospel of Mark, which I think is the right place to go after we read the closing words of the Old Testament. We'll pick up with, with the, the, the earliest, I think, of the four Gospels to be written. Not the earliest book of the New Testament to be written, but the earliest of the four Gospels to be written. And we'll look at, a, we'll, we'll look at the Gospel of Mark, which uh, has so many special blessings to offer us. And uh, thank you for joining me uh, for this study of the Minor Prophets. And we'll go to the New Testament next time. Thank you.